questions as we're going along here today. You can plop it in the room. I will see the questions. Welcome, everyone. We're going to talk about how you can earn a living trading today. My name is Melissa Arma. I think everybody here knows me or has seen me on TV. I would think. Can everybody see the slide? You go down to here to the chat to two individual user and then you chat right where I just put the hi. That's how you ask questions. Everybody got it? Wonderful. Let's talk about how you can earn a living trading. So again, I appear on TV. My name is Melissa Armo. I talk about the stock market. I talk about trading. I talk about the economy. We're in a very, very interesting market this year, as you well know. High inflation, high interest rates. There's a lot going on and a lot to follow. So it's an interesting time to trade. Uh, if you have questions after today, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And you can always call me and ask me questions at 929-3200-GAP. And again, I will answer the phone if I hear it ring. If not, you can leave a message and I will call you back after the fact. So we're here today to talk about trading and specifically earning a living trading. It's interesting because... You know, sometimes people start out, they want to trade, they think they want to do this, but they don't really have a set goal in mind. When I started trading, I had a set goal in my mind, and it was that I wanted to earn a living trading. So when you first start out, I think it's very, very important to know why you want to do this in the first place, because if you don't know why you want to do this, um, you're not going to be focused enough. And you also need a plan of action to make it happen. So, you know, for me, I wanted to change careers. I was doing mortgages and I didn't have a plan of action, to be honest with you. I thought I could just take one class, learn how to do it, go from there. I didn't understand that it was more complex. And then I ended up developing my own system, which took about three years. So I think a lot of people trade the market with this idea that they can make money, but don't really have a plan. And like I said, I didn't have a plan either, but I quickly learned that I needed a plan and the most important part of that plan was to find a strategy that I could use every day. Uh, I don't want to get too off topic here today, but the Reddit stock GME, I didn't look at how that closed. How did that close today? Does anybody know? That's a Reddit stock that people have been jumping into, buying, doing all kinds of things today. And the stock was halted nine times at least. I probably was halted more than that. When I counted this morning, it was nine times. People have no strategy to trade that. They're following someone that's a complete and total stranger that's on social media and they're buying the stock. Uh, very dangerous to do that. Again, if that particular person has a strategy, I don't know what it, what it would be, but if that person has a strategy and that's why they're doing it, that's one thing. A lot of people follow strangers when they take trades and it's not a good idea. In order to join my live trading room, people have to take my class. They have to learn the strategy. There's a reason to that. I want people to be successful. If you understand what to do, you will be successful. If you do not understand what to do, you're going to struggle. And that is one of the main reasons why I have the trading room, the live trading room I run every day for people that have done the class. Also, we go over proprietary things in the live room. But anyways, here's the results so far for this year. Just see if I can move this thing here. It's in the middle of the PowerPoint. Um, the live results for this year in the trading room, this is uh, through Thursday of last week. I don't have today's stats or uh, yesterday's stats in here. But 427187 this is with an average risk of $3,000 per, per trade. And again, this is my risk per trade. These are trades on margin. Um, then I have the stats in here for the options newsletter. This isn't updated for the last couple of days either, but this is a larger risk. So I risk on average 8,000 or more on my options trades. I'm risking a lot more, more than double actually, almost triple in my options trades specifically because I want to be able to hold overnight and do more expensive uh, stocks. NVIDIA, for example, is a very expensive option that we have traded several times this year. So my results... Uh, my monetary results are larger for my options 
uh, results because of the fact I'm risking more as well. But it's the same strategy that I'm doing. And again, you can trade options on a cash account, not in a margin account, which a lot of people like to do, because again, you can open up a, a non-margin account, a cash account, uh, an option account with as little as $2,000. You have to set your risk according to that as well. And again, I let some people in here late. If you have any questions, you can just plop it in the room down in here where I'm gonna just write hi um, if you have questions as we're going along today. But anyways, we're at this point now in the year. Again, it's not quite the end of May. We're about the midway point in May. Uh, so 15th on Wednesday, I think. So we got about two more weeks left in the month of May. It's hard to believe it's five months into the year. So for me, I particularly focus on a set strategy that involves trading gaps. And we're gonna talk about that today. But it really is about the morning for me. I'm always trying to get in my trades and enter my trades early in the morning. So if you're someone that's looking to trade between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, that's the type of schedule that you're gonna to need to have to be able to have that available. Again, I'm in Eastern time zone in New York to be able to trade. I also like to get in and out of my trades fast and quick, particularly, again, the day trades. Now, I will hold options, but I'm in and out of my day trades very, very quickly. If you're someone that's wanting to do this because you want to work from home, you may want to think about trading or if you want a new career. And specifically, one of the reasons that I got into trading was I wanted something that had an unlimited income potential because when I did mortgages, I had unlimited income potential. Like I said, that changed for me. But I really was passionate about doing loans and doing mortgages for a long, long time and then things change. And sometimes things do change. So you've got to have a passion for what you do for a living. I really do like chart reading. And again, we're gonna look at charts today. It's really about technical analysis or advanced technical analysis. I like looking at the chart and predicting where something's going to go before it does it. So if you're ready to start making some changes in your trading and your life, the best thing you could do is jump into it full stop. Nobody knows if they're gonna have a learning curve or if so, what that learning curve is. The best thing you can do for yourself is to just take action and start. So many people put off things that they want to do with their lives and they never quite get around to it. There's never going to be the perfect, perfect, perfect time for you to start trading. There's never going to be the perfect weekend for you to take my class. There's never going to be the perfect amount of money that you have all this money saved up that you can open up a trading account and start. And again, I started the stock swoosh business back 2012 and you know, of all the years that I've had the business and I've been teaching people, I know people go through different changes in their life. People get married, people get divorced, people have kids, people change jobs. Sometimes people lose their jobs, get laid off, people retire. People go through ups and downs in life all across the way. If, you, if this is something that you know you wanna do, there's no reason to wait because there's never gonna be, quote unquote, what you say is the perfect, perfect time. The perfect time to start doing something is now if you really want to do it. And you got to find a way to make a way to start the process while you're working your regular job and making the transition. For me, like I said, I was working a full-time job doing mortgages when I started to trade. And I did for several years until I figured it out. And I was basically working two jobs. So I was working in the morning trading and that was one of the reasons, the nice reasons to trade in the morning be done quick. And then I would do my mortgage job in the afternoon into the evening. But the fact is you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everyone does. Why? As I was saying earlier, and I know some people came in late, people will trade without a strategy. They will risk money in the market just for taking risk sake. You can't do that. Again, not every trade that I take works. I have some trades that lose, but I have a method to my madness of why I'm taking the trade so that overall, over the course of a week, a month, a year, over the long haul, as I'm trading, I have more winners than losers because I'm using and utilizing the strategy that I trade. And again, one of the pitfalls and downfalls of many, many people that trade the stock market is that they are so anxious and excited to make money that they don't think about why they're taking the trade or what's the purpose of taking the trade. And again, a lot of people start trading, they lose money, they don't know what they're doing, and then they get discouraged and upset and again, I was talking about that GME stock today. It was halted so many times a day that, that, I mean, I can understand why people would say, well, this is rigged. 
it's rigged. You know, why would they halt it? To be honest with you, when stocks get halted, which is not that often, uh, it's usually when stocks are falling hard, fast, quickly, and down a lot. You didn't see that happen in that stock today. That stock was up today. So the fact that it got halted so many times was unusual, was unusual. But this is the market. That's why you have to think about your risk. You have to think about your trades. You have to think about why you're doing something. And again, we didn't trade that stock today because it didn't have high odds of working. It's a 50-50 it's a crap shoot to me. And I don't consider that good enough odds. When I look at something, I'm trying to get something that has very high odds of working or I don't want to risk money in it. But if you've been somebody that's trying to trade the market and you've been up and down and all around, you've got to get to the point where you just make up your mind and say, I'm going to do it. You just decide you're going to overcome the obstacles that you've had in the past to move forward and do it. No one is born and then starts making money trading. It's just not the way it is. And again, I've talked to so many people throughout the years since I've been running the business, people that have had financial difficulties, again, losing jobs or getting divorced, things that happen in people's everyday lives and they want to do something different. You just have to press forward. And again, you're the one that can do it. You're the one that can make the choices to change your life. So in order to become successful, you have to be serious. It's very important. And that really means learning from someone and taking direction. So I run the live trading room. When I call the trades in the room, if I call the trade, the first number is the entry, second one's a stop. You can go to my YouTube. I have many, many videos of the trading room going back for the last, you know, 12, 13, 14 years. But I'm the one running the room. I'm calling out the trades. And the benefit of being in the room is you can do the trade with me as I'm calling it at the exact entry and the exact stop and the exact exit. And again, following someone makes it so much easier than just doing it on your own. Again, it's important to understand what to do, but having someone like a mentor really, really helps. And although I charge money for my class, of course I do, because I'm teaching you the information. It's time that I'm taking to teach you as well. It costs you money to sign up for my class, but it saves you money in the end because you learn how to do it, you get focused, and then you trade smart instead of taking trades willy-nilly like I said, on a, a chat room from someone that's a complete stranger. So let's look at one trade that we did here recently. This was last week. So I don't know if any of you noticed or followed, Disney had earnings last week. So what do I specifically do? I focus on stocks that are gapping. So let's go over what is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Disney closed here, gap down. Now, again, this was last week. Disney closed at 4 o'clock Eastern time up here, snug as a bug, around 116 and change, and gapped down here and opened at a different price. It opened at a lower price. So what do I do? Well, I get up in the morning and I look for stocks that are gapping. In this case here, I looked for this Disney. I knew it was going to have earnings. I didn't know what it was going to do. When I saw it, I rated it, and it rated that something was going to continue the momentum in the gap. So the momentum in this gap was what? To the downside, this was a bearish gap, and we shorted it. And we got in, got out. So anyways, this was a nice trade. This was a day trade. You would have needed a margin account to do this trade. You could have taken 100 shares. You could have taken 3,000 shares. You could have taken more, okay? And if anyone doesn't know what a margin account is, ask me now. Write it in the room if you don't know what that is. But the entry was 106.60. Again, my risk is around 3,000. I risked 3,600. I added at 106 in this. I really, really liked it. Total shares was 6,000. Average price was 106.30. Pulled almost $2 out of it. Got close. Exited. Again, profit was 10,200. Now, again, people ask, well, again, how much margin do you need? Even if somebody opened up a prop account, a prop account, and you get 10 to 1 margin. Even if you opened up a prop account and they gave you more than 10 to 1 margin, you still have to assess your risk based on the amount of cash in your account. So for example, if you have $10,000 cash in your account, I wouldn't risk 30% of your account to take the trade. I would risk somewhere between 500 and maybe 750. 1,000 would be a lot. If you really like the gap, you could do it. And again, with a $10,000 prop account, you would have 100,000 in buying power, okay? So again, when you're looking to take a trade, you have to look at your buying power, your margin, your risk. And again, the first number is the entry, second one's a stop when I'm calling the trades in the room. This was a gap, this was what? This was a short. 
So again, I trade momentum. How do you make money in the market? You got to get the direction right and the stock has to move. You have to go with the momentum, okay? And again, part of the problem with many of these Reddit stocks and these Reddit picks is that the momentum is all the way upside down and that's why they really are wild card plays besides the fact that obviously as we were talking about the stock got halted. Uh, this was another really nice one we did. We did a put in this as well. I don't have that here in this lecture, but we did a day trade in shop. And we did, actually, we did puts in Disney too. We did a day trade in shop and we did a put in shop. Okay, Joseph is asking a question. Please explain the difference between a margin account and a cash account. Um, you have to, you should be able to do both at that, at that broker. Yes, Joseph. So a margin account is required. U.S. retail brokers, like you're talking about, you need a minimum of $25,000 cash and you will get four to one margin, which means you will have 100,000 in buying power. That's not 100,000 in cash. You only have 25,000 in cash. You have 100,000 in buying power. Let me go back to the example here in Disney. So just to make it simple, let's pretend that Disney was $100 a share and you had 100,000 in buying power, you would have been able to short a thousand, a thousand shares of Disney. A cash account is something that you can have and trade and actually short the stock or buy the stock outright, but it's not going to be in a margin account if you have less than 25,000. So you can open up an options account, which you could open it up again. You got to fill out the paperwork with the broker and you could say, I want to set this up as a cash account, whereby they will not require you to put up 25000 You can open up a cash account to trade options, options only. You wouldn't be able to do margin trades. You could buy a put in Disney. And again, I'm just making this up for here for an example. Pretend you bought a put at Disney and you had $5,000 in an options account and you wanted to buy one Disney put and pretend it costs you $2, you would pay what? $200. So what would the, your account balance be? Well, you'd still have $4,800 uh, left to be able to trade and take more trades if you want to in your account because it just pulls out the cash, which is the cost of the Disney trade. But you could have done Disney puts that day and you could have exited Disney puts that day. This was back here on that day. This was 5-7, okay? So if you don't have 25,000 in margin, you can open up a cash account, but you're only doing options then. If you wanna go prop, again, that is not a retail broker. It's not the one you mentioned there, Joseph. You can go prop. There's a million different prop places. You have to look through and sort through them and do your due diligence. If you want a referral, you can ask me, but prop, proprietary prop brokers will allow you to trade on margin with as little as 2,500 or 5,000 and they're, this is cash and they will give you 10 to one margin. Now you're not gonna be able to do options with a prop place, but you don't need to if you have that size account. You can open up a cash account at the retail broker you were talking about, Joseph, and do options. So it really depends, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna trade on margin and do day trades in and out of here quick or you wanna do options? We will talk about options a little bit later. I have some options trades in here, but I don't always do the same trades in the room as I do in the options newsletter. Sometimes I do, but not always. In this case here though, we did short Disney. We bought a put, which is a short, and we day traded it, which was a short, and we did the same thing here with shop. Now shop puts didn't go though the, the first day we did them so again i'm looking for the best gap that's number one this is the strategy trying to figure it out so stock post here gap down boom this is the night before this is last week again this was 5 8 the day the gap happened so shop shop till you drop was up here right around 77 and change boom gap down here in the morning around 63 open fell we did a day trade in this, so I really was hog wild with this. Entered at 63.15, I did an ad at 62.39, I did another ad at 62.15. My average price was 62.46 and it dropped and I was out. I wanted this to go a little bit more. I knew that it would, but it didn't really have the massive sell off till Friday. And actually you could still be in the puts here. You could still be in the puts that I called last week for shop. 
You could have got out of them Friday. You could have got out of them today. You could still be in them. Anyways, this was a nice day trade last week, but the day we did it is here. She said, what's the benefit of options? Day trades, dip, 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 dip. I like doing both. With an option, you might have to wait a little bit to get it down. With a day trade, I can't wait. I got to get it. I got to get in. I got to get out. I got to be done. With an option, you got to wait. But what also is a benefit is then you could get a bigger move with an option if you can wait, which again, this did go. My target was 60 and beyond. It broke it. It was good. And again, it just took a couple of days. It took three days down for that to go. So again, depends on your time horizon. When you take a trade and you say, and I'm just, again, use an example here. Say you have $10,000 in an options account. That money is being sucked up if you, if you, you know, buy $2,000 in shop puts that you can't use that $2,000 until you exit the trade. When I'm in a day trade and I'm using up the money to take the trade and I'm in and out in five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the room, I'm done. Boom. The profit's back in my account. The money I used to take the position is back in my account with a put. If I'm carrying a trade Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday... I'm carrying that trade over. That money is being sucked up by me being in the position until I exit it. And then it goes back in my account. Again, the benefit of doing an option and exiting it, sometimes people want to hold stuff for longer, which we which we want to do. I'm sure you could have got out of here with money on this day, but I really wasn't paying attention to it and it wasn't up that much. So this was the good exit here or here and today would be good, even though this still does look lower actually. Again, I don't know where this closed today, but it's red. So getting back to the strategy and the concept, why did we short shop? A put is a short. The day trade we did was a short, okay? We shorted it, no matter how you did it, because I predicted that the stock would drop. How did I know the stock would drop? How did I know the momentum and the gap would follow through lower? Again, it has to go lower than where it opened. Otherwise, we can't short it. So if the stock's opening here, I don't know exactly where this opened, 63 something. If the stock's opening here, the only way I'm going to make money if I'm shorting it, I don't care if it's a put, I don't care if it's a day trade, anything. The only way I'm going to make money, again, this is 5.8, is if it goes down. It has to go under, down. If it doesn't go down, then I'm not going to make money. Again, a short, when we're shorting, we want it to go down. Again, the momentum in this case here, we want it to fall through lower, and it did. And it did. So... Again, the fast trade was a day trade. You had to wait a little bit for the option. So it's rid of whatever works for you. Any other questions? That was a good question. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, saying success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. Because if you don't have a good system, you're not gonna make money. If you don't have any system, you're definitely not gonna make money. And again, sometimes people can make money doing anything. Again, some people made money Trading GME, I'm sure, today, but probably more people lost than made money. So again, a crapshoot can work anytime. Again, there's a 50-50 odds you can go to Atlantic City, or no, probably worse odds than that, but you know, worse than 50-50 odds. But let's say, best case scenario, 50-50 odds, you go to Atlantic City, you go gambling, there's always a chance you can win. That's just not good enough odds. You're, just, you're not gonna earn a living doing something that's a crapshoot. It can't be like you're gambling. It has to have a method. I'm sure everyone here, if you're trading, has heard of Kramer, who has his own television show on CNBC. He basically is a TV personality. He's been doing TV for, I don't know, 20, 30 years. He gives stock picks on his show, if you've ever watched it. He has a different reason for every stock pick for this and that. He mostly focuses on fundamentals. Fundamentals happen again, are already built into the price. We're, this is live trading right now, this second, today, this week, next week, again, if we're doing options, where are we going to make money right now? Anything that happens fundamentally with the earnings or this or that is already built into the price of the stock that we're seeing. And when he talks about those things, it's it changes every stock that he talks about, every company that he talks about, depending on whatever he says. So my method is something that you can apply to A, B, C, D, every single stock and the market and any ETF that's out there. Any gap, you can call it whatever you want, A, B, C, gap, you know, stock ticker symbol. You can, as long as it has a chart, as long as it trades and has volume, you can use the system, rate it, and do it. And it's something that you can learn.
there, you couldn't learn Jim Cramer's stock pick six system. There is no system. It's whatever he feels like saying. Do you understand the difference? And that's the problem, again, following strangers who say, well, I really think this looks good. It's the same problem with people wanting to buy dips. While that worked in the last two weeks to buy the dip in the market, I did not do it. I did not do it. I didn't believe in it. But while that worked for the last two weeks, it, could, it, it will fail today. It could fail tomorrow. And again, it doesn't work all the time. And there's, that's not a strategy. You can't say my strategy is I buy every dip. Well, it's not going to work. Overall, you will lose. You have to have a method to why you're doing something in the first place. Any other questions here as I'm going along? Okay, I'm gonna keep going then. So anyways, how do you become successful day trading? Again, whether it's options, whether you're doing the margin trades, whatever works for you. The number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. Every day I get up and I'm looking for the same thing. Some days I find it, some days I don't. Some days I find a couple trades. But I'm looking for the same thing every day, every day. Every single day I get up tomorrow, I'm gonna to look for the same thing I look for today, tomorrow, in a different ticker symbol. Trading success and financial success in the market is by pure design. It's not by accident. Again, when people made money in the GME, the last go around two years ago, or any of these Reddit stocks, it was by accident. It was dumb luck. So that's not a strategy. Now, what does it take to be successful? It takes having a niche. For me, it's not only gaps, but really shorting. I prefer to short. Now, I will sometimes go long. I do sometimes go long. I usually am going long, though, mostly if I'm doing options for calls. But again, I prefer to short. Many, many people do not know how to short. Many people don't know what to short, and many people just prefer to go long. And I guess the reasoning for that is because people understand the concept of going long, buy low, sell high, they don't always understand the concept of shorting. But if you want to trade like everyone else out there, your results will be like everyone else unless you find something to do that's different. Something to do that you have a niche. For me, it's really reading not just gaps and shorts, but also I can read very quickly, right into the open in the first five minutes of the day, where a stock's going to go, what it's going to do very quickly. And I also can tell in the pre-market where somebody's going to go. May go there right away as of the same day. May take a day or two like the shop. Again, when I did the shop, I wanted the shop puts to go right away as that day. Well, it didn't go that day. They took two more days. That's okay. You still made money. But anyways, it's the whole idea of looking at it, looking for the momentum, looking for the institutional money that's coming into the stock, seeing where it's going to go, reading it, and seeing where it's going to go before it does it. Again, this is not actually, you know, taking it and predicting what the earnings are going to be in Disney. Okay, Rashis, that's okay. That's okay, Rashis. You can, you can come another time if you have to go. Anyways, my, my prediction is not predicting the earnings itself. Okay, I'm not saying I know Disney's going to be down in the earnings or Disney's going to be up on the earnings in the gap. I don't know that. I don't know what the earnings are going to say on Disney. I wait for the gap itself, okay, and then proceed and rate it. But the whole purpose of everything that I do is based on a rating system, which is a 26-point checklist. So if you decide you want to come and take my class, this is what you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to rate gaps. You're going to learn how to find a gap, rate it, professional bearish gaps, get up in the morning, you make a watch list of every single thing that's gapping down, and you can rate them all. Now, I usually make a small watch list. So I don't get up like at 4 a.m. and rate a thousand things. I'll get up, you know, in the morning and I'll spend about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. If I spend two hours, there's a lot to rate. And I will go through and rate everything that's gapping down, put them in order. And anything that rates 20 points or more, I am deciding to short. I could short as a day trade, I could do a put, I could do both, I could do one or the other, okay? And this tells me what I want to trade and in what direction. Whether you buy a put in something or whether you short it as a day trade on margin is totally up to you if you're doing the picks and doing the ratings yourself. But the whole purpose of what I do is based on following large institutional money in the market. Disney is a great example because Disney was sold off. That's it. Disney got dumped. Gaps are created with large institutional money. Institutional money sold off Disney. They dumped their shares of it. And that's what made that gap. 
The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. So again, there's so many different examples that I could show you. Shop is another one, again, where it got, it tanked, okay? Institutional money dumped it. They own the stock and they dumped it. You can say, why? What do the earnings say? Again, I don't take time to read that information because it doesn't matter to me. All I know is that the gap rated per the 26 point system, 20 points or more, okay? The whole point is to have a set system that you use every day. That is what you use as that's like your checklist, that's your checkpoint, and then you're not just trading on a feeling. So you're saying, well, I have a feeling that this is gonna go up today. I have a feeling of this. Someone mentioned what the GME closed at today. Well, the high of that stock earlier was 38. So it closed close to the open. It opened around 28. So people had a feeling it was gonna rally today. Well, if you got in it early and got out of it early, you, were, you made money. If not, you lost. You can't trade on feelings. Again, there was no strategy in that at all to do. So I don't trade it based on feelings, okay? By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. And by the way, institutional money isn't buying GME. So that's why I don't wanna go long it. Of course, I'm not shorting it either. But anyways, gaps are an event and creates a sense of urgency. Hurry, 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 you gotta do it right now. Again, that's the whole point, like with the Disney, okay? GME you're talking about from Friday's close till today gapped up. That's true. What does that have to, 74% means nothing to me. The last, look at the last high of GME. GME is in a downtrend. I won't be surprised if GME opens and gaps down tomorrow. I don't even know if you could short it. All brokers change today the cash requirements. You can't even trade that on margin. You can't even trade that on margin after today. Those brokers are covering their butts. The fact that it's up 74% from the clones means absolutely nothing. It wasn't bought with institutional money. Traders bought it. Traders can move a stock. Retail traders can move a stock. How do you think you got the move you got two years ago? But it didn't go anywhere. If we have time, we'll talk about that at the end. I don't trade based on percentages though. If you're asking that, John, whether it's up or down, I don't trade and make decisions based on percentages. None of my points are based on percentages. But anyways, gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. That's an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gold and gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. That's what you want to be on the side of. And so if you find it, spot it, and play with it, you can make money. Here was another one we did. This was 5.3 EXPE. This was a good one. Entry was 120.30. Risk was 36.30. Exit was 118.10. Again, 24.20. This was on this day. I, this was crazy because again, I, I, I exited this train around 118 and change. Look where it went. It was crazy. I could have held it longer. Again, I like to get in and out fast, but this particular stock went all the way down. I could have made another $3 plus. So anyways, this was 5.3. It was a gap. Stock closed here, gap down. Stock closed up here around 136 and change. Opened the morning around 120 something and fell. This is another one you could have done a couple of days in the row, and you could have done a put. That was back again, 5-3. So what happened here, again, we dumped it, okay? So this is a short, so you would either short it as a day trade or you would buy a put. What happened to the momentum here in the XP? It fell. The momentum was to the downside, okay? So again, it goes back to, you say, oh, well, this makes total sense. I get it. We're going with momentum. That makes total, total sense. It's about making good choices when you want to trade. How do you find quality trades? You got to use a solid system. You need to pick the right stock to trade and get the entry correct as well. Again, I didn't go long that one today, that GME. But if you had a good entry, you could have made money. You would have needed a good exit too. But again, you got halted a million times at the position. It's going back to the whole point of, got to get the entry right, got to get the exit right, but you got to get the direction right. You won't make money if you don't get the direction right. And if you're in something that doesn't want to move, it's a little bit here, a little bit there, pennies, 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 
Again, we don't trade low float stocks for that very reason. You have to take way too much risk and way too much size and things that are way too thin and way too spreading. It's, you're a lot better off trading stocks that cost a little more, $30 a share, $50 a share, even $100 a share or more, and taking less size and getting a two, three, four dollar move in it. And again, same thing with the puts. You wanna do something that has a tighter spread and something that has volume. Anyways, the system tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy in a system that's profitable. I follow Golden Gaps. It's a highly profitable strategy because it focuses on large momentum to trade. Disney had large momentum. Shop had large momentum. EXPE had large momentum. Okay. What stocks should you trade? Stocks that gap and rate 20 points or more per the Golden Gap 26-point rating system. You trade the gap in the direction of the gap. And when do you trade them? Early in the morning on the open when they set up and trigger. Again, whether you do it as an option or a day trade is up to you. It's a type of trade. I'd like to do both. Many people want to trade. They're not serious enough about it. They don't do the same thing every day as far as the system goes. They're all over the place. Again, some weeks are profitable. Some weeks they're not. They're losing. And they're up and down. And by the end of the year, they're either flat or down. And so you can't make a living that way. <laughs> You know, if you don't have something that you're going to follow every day in a structured format, you're not going to be, it's like if somebody said, well, you're hired, you're hired to do this job. You got to show up at this office in midtown Manhattan, your, your work hours are nine to five Monday through Friday. If you don't show up and do the job, you're not going to get paid. Okay. It's the same thing with trading. You got to show up and you got to do the job. Part of doing the job is going through this checklist for me. It's the process of going through and doing the work. The work is not, I feel like doing this. It's like someone hires you for a job. You say, well, I don't feel like going to work today. Eh. Or I feel like leaving early today. Well, the job isn't done. If a project or a meeting or a report that's due, it's, you have to take it as seriously as it is a real job to do it, to do well. And a lot of people just say, well, this is really fun. I'm just going to do it as a 50-50 crapshoot and, and chat in chat rooms. And, and, and it's just not going to give you and the, the rewards and the benefit that you want if you don't take it seriously enough. But anyways, how much money do you need to risk per trade during living? It depends where you're at, how much money you have in your account, you can grow it. I've had people that have started out with me with very small accounts with as little as $2,000 or $3,000 and grow it. I had one trader that started out the year with $1,500 in her account. Now, the last time I talked to her, I think she had about 9000 something so you can grow a small account you have to be careful you have to do it slowly i mean a lot of everybody says well if i had more money i could do it well no not necessarily because if you don't have a lot of money uh or if you have a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing you're going to lose it you could have two hundred thousand dollars and lose it all you don't know what you're doing and you can have a small account and you could grow it if you do know what you're doing any questions here so far Sometimes I go long. We went, we went long Apple today. We went long Apple today. It worked. But again, I prefer to short. So if I, if I go long, it's because I saw a good gap that was long, that was a bullish gap, or I didn't like any shorts. So yeah, I'll go long. We went long today. But tomorrow I'm going to get up and look for a short. And if I don't find any shorts, then I'll look for a long But I because I prefer to short. Any other questions? Anyways, how to achieve your goals. Make good choices. Have a plan of action. Have a good system. Take quality entries. Don't ever trade. That's another big problem for traders. I try to get in and out quickly in the morning, do one trade a day, maybe two. Don't be piggish about targets if your goal for the day is in, okay, and you chunk it out. Again, whether you're trying to make $1,500 a week, that's, that's decent. Again, six grand a month. A lot of people are losing. You can make $6,000 a month or $1,500 a week. That's great as a trader because a lot of people are losing. You say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, uh, I can't earn a living doing that. Okay, well, you're part-time trading, making $1,500 a week, plus you have your regular job or you're retired. If you're doing that for a couple of weeks, then eventually you can up your risk again if your goal is to make 5000 a week or, or 2000 a week or whatever. You bump it up. You chunk it out and you can increase your goals. You got to prove that you can do it first. Again, it's not like you're going to be in a set amount forever. 
when I first started trading, my average risk was $150 per trade. It was that it was a lot. Uh, it was a lot of long time that I set that. And I was trying to figure out my system at that point. So if I lost it, I didn't lose a lot. And if I won, I could make three, four hundred, five hundred dollars in a trade, in a day trade. So and at that time, I didn't start out doing options until I figured out this whole thing. So you don't have to have a big risk initially to start out of the game. Learn it. Trust yourself. Believe that you can do it. Start doing it. Prove that you could have the consistency. And it's the consistency that counts. I'm extremely consistent. Anyone that's ever trading with me for more than 30 days in the room with me knows that I'm very consistent with what I do. Very, very structured. I'm a structured person to begin with. I get up early, I eat breakfast and lunch and dinner at almost the same time every day, I exercise every day at the same time. Structure is, that's my personality, but it really is like essential, essential for you to trade. You have to have the structure. Um, what about missing the train? You lost me. I don't know what you mean by missing the train. Is there a question there? How do you get through the checklist fast enough? Well, as early as you want to get up in the morning. You could rate gaps at night, stuff gaps at night. You could rate gaps in the morning whenever you want to get up out of bed. I don't know what you mean by that. I can rate gaps very quickly, but I don't. I take my time. So if you're new and you just did the class, I would say you can rate one gap in about five to 10 minutes if you're if you're taking your time go through it but what do you mean that you don't have time you have plenty of time i would say if you want to give yourself two hours to rate gaps that's more than enough time i'd say you got to give yourself one hour probably i don't rate it before it happens i wait till it happens and then i rate it i think you're thinking that it's i'm doing it on the open no 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 i'm doing it before the open. Anyways, it's a system that is consistently reliable. And, it, and, it, and again, it helps you with fake outs. It also gives you conviction and confidence when you need it. And that's really important because everybody has trades that sometimes lose. And again, I could look at something to have a certain bias, take a trade, get stopped. And then maybe it goes the next day. Or maybe I'm in a put and that works and the day trade fails. Having confidence and conviction, because I've been doing this for so long, um, really helps me. So I ride the waves when I have trades that don't work out right and then have a consecutive you know, streak of winners and then it helps me keep going. But you still can't have too many losers no matter what you're doing. But when I lose in a train, it's not like the end of the world for me. When I first started, of course it was because I didn't know what I was doing. But if you find that it's the end of the world when you're losing in a trade, chances are your risk is too big or you don't know what you're doing. That's it. There's only two things that could be wrong. You either don't know what you're doing or your risk is too big. Because if you knew what you were doing, you'd be okay with the one loss and if your risk was in line. Unfortunately, I think for a lot of traders, one, their risk is too big and two, they don't know what they're doing. The problem with that GME, and again, if we have time at the end here, we'll go over it. People were doubling down in that today. With the move it had in the gap from Friday to Monday, people were doubling down. People were adding to already losing positions that they've been holding for weeks and months and years. And it's terrible to do that. No one should do that. But again, this is, this is the market. This is trading. You take risk. People have to be responsible for trades that they take that don't work out. Anyways, let's talk about some puts. So if you sign up for the options newsletter, this is what it looks like. Symbol was BA. Strike was 165. This expired on the third. I called this uh, the 24th. All right, let's look at this one. This was a put. Uh, 424BA. Wait, let me find the chart. 424BA. Oh, here. So this fell, gap down, dropped, boom. Again, here's 165. Here's where it fell. Again, this is a higher risk. I didn't have time to put a lower risk in here. But if you risk one contract and just risk $175, you could have sold it for six. Okay. You could have made 243% return on investment. That's a good train. That's a good train. You could have taken one contract. You could have taken 10 contracts, risked 1750 and sold it at six and made over 200%. So the profit on this though with the higher risk was 21,250. This was a nice trade. Again, sell off, drop, fall, boom. That's what I was looking for here in the BA. INTC we did, again, 50% is good in this. That's all I made on this one. This was the 32 puts. Let me find the chart. 
426 here. Stop close your gap down, open, boom. Droop, doom, doom. There it was. Again, here's the gap. Stop close your gap down. We did day trade in this. You could have got in and got out. You could have held it, doo, 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 and got out. And this was really actually very cheap. $1.20. I made 54%. That's a good trade. And again, you could have got in and out the first day of this, actually. This was also a day trade that we did. But again, here is the gap. Stock closed up here, run 35 and change, gap down, open, dropped. Again, momentum was to the downside. And again, Joseph, you're asking, I'm the gap's there. I did all the work in the morning. I said, oh, this is going to follow through in the gap to the downside and fall. And then we wait to the open to buy a put. You can't do puts in the pre-market. Or we wait to the open to short it. Then we did Microsoft, the 405s. This was the 29th. This was all the same week. 5-3 expiration. Let's find Microsoft. Oh, here. That was this one. Wait a minute. What day was that? 429. This was a good one. Stock close here. Gap down. Open. Sold off like a hot cake. Boo! We did the 405s. Came down. Broke 390. Went to the dream target. Out. Done. Boom. That was a nice trade. And again, we did a day trade in there too. 550. This was, uh, you could say, sort of expensive for Microsoft, but it was good. Sometimes I'll do them at the money. Sometimes I'll do them away from the money. You could have done a lower strike here. And again, one contract would have cost $550. You could have sold it for 12, okay? 118% return investment is a good trade. You take it one day, get out the next. Profit on this was 97.50. Again, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because it was a good gap. And I said, this is gonna sell off. Boom, and it did. Okay? I'm not predicting the gap itself. I'm seeing the gap. And then I rate it and I do it if it rates 20 points or more. Okay? Anyways, we were talking about money management. I was bringing up about the fact that a lot of people with that GME today doubled down. That's There's like zero money management in something like that. You're taking more position that's going against you. You're just basically adding to your risk, which doesn't make sense. When I do day trades, I put stops in. They're limit order stops. They're hard stops. If it hits through the stop, like you saw at the beginning of my stats, I'll take a loss. I'm out. Now with options, I don't use stops. My risk is the stop. I can't lose any more. If I risk eight grand on something and it goes bust, then that's what I'm losing. So I don't like kill it in the middle of the trade. Okay. But money management is very, very important. Otherwise, you could have five beautiful winning trains, whether they're 50%, 80%, 100% or more, and then you could have one loser that has no stop in it, trails against you, all goes bust, you risk too much, you double down, and you're, you're, you're down. You could be upside down with one losing trade and five winners, <laughs> literally. So that's why you can't be all over the place with risking different amounts, okay? But it really helps to be successful and have more winners, but you still got to have the money management part of it there, which is, again, the whole purpose and the idea that you have a set risk per trade, you have a stop in for the day trains, and a set risk that is close to or equal to the risk that you do in every trade. Don't be afraid to take stops and use stops. I've lectured about this before. People don't want to take a stop because they don't want to take a loss, but the stop is like the insurance. It's there to protect you. If I take a stop, sometimes I'll do a retake. It's called a retake. I go over this in class. I get back into it. Fine. But if it doesn't reset up, I don't get back into it. And then it's not going to work. And then I take the stop and I find something else to do. So you're better off taking the stop and retaking it if, in fact, it's going to reset up and work. Otherwise, leave it. You take the stop. You take the loss. Find something else to do or you just stop that day with the one loss. One loss should never kill anyone. And again, I don't trade all day till 4 o'clock. If I'm holding something, that's a different story, but that's unusual. Anyways, you have to win more than you lose. That's the only way to consistently make profits. And you also have to win more times than you lose. So you have to be right a lot. And what helps me be right a lot is a 26-point rating system. I'm not right 100% of the time. I have some trades that lose. But I am right more than I'm ever wrong for as many years as I've been trading, using the same system, and that's why I have a successful business for as long as I have for 14 years, going on 15, and it is why people trade with me for as long as I've been trading. 
to make it in this business as a day trader, you cannot lose a lot. And that's why you also have to have money management. You stops. You can't risk too much. We were talking about smaller accounts. For example, like if you had an account with $2,000 as an options account, you, you shouldn't risk more than $100, $200 on a trade. You wouldn't risk $500. You wouldn't risk 25% of your account in one trade. That doesn't make sense. You know, add a couple of zeros onto it. You say, oh, well, now I see. But it's the same concept, okay? <laughs> Any questions here? Anyways, if you want to make a living, whether that's $10,000 a month or 20 or 30 or 40, you know, things things have changed in the world. You know, this the average income, people say, well, it's great to make $250,000 a year. I remember, you know, that was my goal when I first started trading 2008. It's That barely pays the bills anymore. Depends where you live, but if you have kids and a family and a husband and a wife and two dogs, things are too expensive. Even the idea of trading on the side with a job that if you're doing a job that you love and you like, actually to make extra money is great. I have several people trading with me that are very successful, enjoy their careers, but are trading on the side to make extra money based on the fact that they like to trade, but also because they want extra money because of this economy that we live in. Everything costs more. And I honestly don't think that the cost of things are ever gonna go back down to where they used to be. Oil prices fluctuate. I, some of the food prices, I don't think this is it. Like, I don't think they're ever going back down to normal costs. And again, oil prices are still very, very high. Interest rates is a different discussion. Who knows what happens? Will we ever see 3%, 4% interest rates again for mortgages? Maybe. Not in the next year. Maybe five years from now. Maybe 10 years from now. Who knows? Maybe never. There's no guarantees. Anyways, stops really help to reinforce the discipline behavior. And again, when you learn this in the class, you'll understand the method behind it. But it's really about quality, not quantity. And again, you know, there's some days where there isn't any good trades and you don't, you don't take any trades. But when I'm doing the day trades, it's different than the option. So it's return investment for the option and it's risk to reward for the day trade. So like if I take a, an option and I'm risking $8,000, 50% is good if I make four grand. I'm trying to make 100, but I don't always make 100 in every trade. Some trades I make more if I happen to be in it. I'm not out of it. I'm down in it, for example, and then it goes overnight. It continues bigger overnight than I could make 300% because I'm still in the trade and it, and it goes in my favor overnight. If I'm in a day trade, I'm not holding it overnight. Got to get out before four and preferably in the morning quick. Again, I might need $300,000 in buying power, which is not cash, but I might need 300 BP to take a trade. I'm only risking three grand. If it stops me out, I'll lose the three grand, but I might need $300,000 in buying power to take the trade. How much cash you need in your account to do that depends on the type of broker you're set up at. And again, prop is 10 to one, retail is four to one. But in that case, if I'm risking $3,000 in a trade, if I have to stop in, say I take it, I'm trying to make 3,000. If I can, if it goes to the target and I'm up $2,500, I'm gonna get out. If it goes past it, I might make 4,500 if it keeps going. Again, but I needed XYZ amount of money in my account to take the trade. So it's, again, risk to reward in that case. You say, oh my God, if you could risk $3,000 and make nine grand, you say, oh my God, that's a huge amount that you made in five minutes. Yes, that's true. But again, you have to have a margin account to do that. It's a different type of trading. But it's, it's just the whole point of what do you want to do? If you're not familiar with options, then probably starting with the day trades is best because you can follow me to the letter in the room. It, either way, the strategy though that I use to do both types of trades is exactly the same. Anyways, you gotta understand what's going on. If you do, you can do it. It's just that so many people are all, all over the place with their trading in it. You, you absolutely can do it. I mean, people are doing extremely well with me this year. And again, you know, it's it's just your decision how you want to do it as far as a day trade and options. I personally like both, but it is all about correct trade selection. It's about getting the directional bias right consistently. You know what direction to take the trade and getting the right pick. It's the right pick. That's what you're going to learn in the class. You're going to learn to get the best pick. 
Trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutional money. Who's buying, who's selling? And again, someone had asked something about that GME. Institutional money didn't buy that. And again, it would have closed at the highs, even if it was anyone was in there with institutional money. It didn't. It didn't. Again, we'll, have, we'll talk about that at the end when, when we have time. But trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutional money. Being on the side of institutions increases your odds to make profits because institutions make stock trends, set the trend, move the trend, change the trend, and move the market. Institutional money moves stocks either up or down. If you want to get paid, the key is to be in the trade with the large directional moves. You must be with this power of money. You must, you must, you must. Right now, if we go over the high in the overall market soon, like now, we have to do it like almost now because we're right there, like this week, got to do it. If we do it, we'll just take off like a hot cake. We'll push higher like nobody's business if institutions are going to buy the market up over the high. It hasn't happened yet, but know that it could. And if it does, it's happening with institutional money, not retail traders' money. But the rating system looks at 26 points of the daily chart of a stock. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock to read the direction correctly. And again, my class is about focusing on bearish gaps. We short. While I occasionally call longs, that class, the bullish class, I'm not doing all the time. I do it once a year, maybe, because we don't do that many longs. And if I go long, it's probably pretty good, because I rarely do it. But the fact is, I prefer to short. Uh, Masood, I don't have any affiliation with anyone, but you can email me and I can recommend several places. But I don't know if you're in the U.S. or not. If you're not in the U.S., you may have to find someone in your country. Uh, there's different rules and regulations if it's not if you're not in the U.S. that you may if you're not a U.S. citizen. Uh, yeah, then you then you probably need to look there. Do you recommend trading on a SIM account first to learn the system? That is something that some people have done that have never traded before because they want to get familiar. So I recommend that if you've never pressed the buttons before. Because we did the day trades very quickly. We're getting in quickly and we're getting out quickly. Um, you could just practice for a week or two on a demo because we're doing the trades so quickly to get used to it for that and, and using hotkeys. But I wouldn't be in a demo for more than a month, and I don't think you need to for more than two weeks, whether you're new or whether you're new to the system. Um, Asuda, I don't know if uh, the broker does Canada or not. You can email me. I can send you a referral, but I don't know if they do Canada. Uh, the prop place does, so I could send you to the prop place. Good questions. Anyways, the points tell you where the money is flowing. Why does this matter? So you know what direction to take the position of profit. So you know what direction to go. That's what you want to do. So what do you need? You need, number one, a strategy. For me, it's golden gaps. I get up in the morning, I rate every gap that I see that's gapping down, and I take any one that's 20 points or more, and I tally them up. And if I'm doing one, I go with the highest point rated one. If it doesn't set up, I flip to the next one quickly. Here was, again, the EXP8. You can do it as a put, you can do it as a day trade. Number two, you need a method and structure to enter and exit the picks. You will learn this in the class. Where do I get in? Where do I get out? You'll learn all my entries, you'll learn the exits. First, you learn the rating system, day one, then day two, you learn the entries and you learn the exits. Number three, you need monetary goals per day, per week. How much money do you want to make? You say, okay, I want to make this much, I have to risk this much, this is what I'm looking for. Goals should be based on a risk unit, which should be based on account size and monetary weekly, monthly goals. You can have goals between now and the end of the year of what you want to make. And again, you start out with where you're at right now. You say, well, I can't risk $3,000 a trade right now. Melissa, I don't have that much. Okay, well, how much do you have? This much. Okay, well, then start with this. But I don't want to make more. But you can't if you don't have it yet. So you try to get your account up to the next level. You have 5,000, get it to 10. You have 10,000, get it to 15. You have 15,000, get it up to 25. Then you can flip it into a margin account. Your goal should be one risk unit on average. Some trades will be more, some trades will be less. If the trade fails, you only lose one risk unit and you take the stop. And there's no deviation from that. Again, everyone's, we live in a society right now. Everyone wants everything right away is yesterday. Nobody wants to do any work. No one wants to learn anything. Everybody wants everything like a million years ago. It's like, I mean, even like something like weight loss now. Ozempic, everyone's heard of it. It's so big now. It's taken over the world like everybody's on it. 
people that really need it for diabetes now can't get it or it's very expensive, it's crazy. People want to take Ozempic. They don't care if there's health risks. I'm not talking about people that have diabetes. I'm talking about people that want to lose weight. They just want to take it because it's the easy way to lose weight really, really quickly. And it works. We don't know the long-term effects of it. And there's already people out that are having health issues from taking it. And supposedly, if you do take it and it works, you have to be on it for the rest of your life. Do you want to be on a drug for the rest of your life? It's just like, every, no one wants to put the work in to do the right thing to get to the next level. Sure, if you have a $5,000 account and you swing the bat big and you risk it all on a BA put, you might be able to get the account up to 25,000 and have a massive put, huge trade. But if it loses, if that's the one that happens to lose, then you'll have no money left in your account. So you have to go incrementally. Again, just like a diet, where you go on the diet and you lose weight and you chunk it out and you proceed and you move forward and you do it. Rather than taking a Zempic, you know, every, every, it's, just, it's just society in general right now. This is where everything is kind of upside down. And people want to take risk in trading for risk's sake. And they often get hurt. They often get hurt. And again, everyone's an adult that can make decisions for themselves. But you're, that's not looking at this as a business. If you look at this seriously and take it seriously and look at it as a business, you absolutely 100% could be successful. But it's the reliability of the system, which for me means sticking with one thing. It's shorting, only doing gaps, only doing gaps at rate 20 points or more. So again, is making $500 a day in the market doable? It's $2,500 a week. Or some days you may not trade. One day you might lose. This is on average. Some days you may make more than 500. What about $1,000 a day? Again, that has to be your risk then. But it's, I'm very, very deliberate in what I do. I say, I love shop, or I love EXP, or I love Disney. I said, I love Disney, I love it, 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 and we did it, and it worked. So again, you have to be very deliberate in your trade choices, 100% conviction, that's how I am, that's how I train. And if you learn it, and you do it, and you start making money with me, you will get conviction in the system to do it. And that will help you take more risk, and it will help you stay on the right path, but it's really about getting the proper education so you can do well and rely on a mentor. And I think a lot of people lack that. I'm one of the few businesses out there trading educational places that I've been out there for as long as I've had the business, like I said, you know, 14, going on 15 years, that you could pick up a phone and you could call me. I run the business. I own the business. I develop the system. I teach the class live. You got to be there live. And also, I will answer your questions for you. I, you could talk to me. You know, the class that I took, I couldn't call the person and ask that person questions. They wouldn't have answered the phone. I didn't have the direct phone number. So I really do try to help people learn it if that is something that you want to do and you should want to do it. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, again, it's, it's the fact that the money comes once you have an understanding of the system and you know what to do. But again, following me helps at the beginning. Anyways, learning a system that works over and over really will get you where you want to be. How long? Could be a month from now, could be two months from now. It doesn't have to be forever. You create a plan of action to get to the goals that you want, whatever that amount of money is. And again, that's, that's changed for people, I'd say, in the last year, but even two years. Because again, things have gone up dramatically. And I think even back in 2022, going into 2023, when housing prices spiked, and you know, people, did, people didn't think it would, the, the, it would last. People thought inflation would come down. I mean, the Fed dropped, I mean, uh, raised rates so much in 2023, people thought for sure it would, it would go down, but it just didn't. And that's what I'm saying. You know, this is probably it. This is, like, this is what things cost. I'm not saying that mortgage rates never go down or credit card rates never go down, but I'm saying, like, the cost of things that we pay for, everyday stuff, rent, food, housing, you know, oil, things are expensive, and they may just be this way. Have I modified my 26-point system over the years or has it stayed the same since its inception years ago? I didn't roll out of bed and make 26 points, so it developed over a course of several years at the beginning. But since I came up with 26 points, I've never added any points, and I've never taken away any points, and I've never changed any points. But I didn't have 26 points at the beginning. It was I had a couple, and then I added a couple, and then this is all when I was trading by myself on my own. I didn't have a business. I wasn't teaching anyone. And it, and it took me a couple of years, and then it I haven't modified it at all since. The only thing that I've added onto my trading since I developed the system itself is I did not do options at the beginning. 
I actually credit my broker. She's the one actually, I really do credit her that she actually said, Melissa, you have to do options. She would see my day trades and she would see how they follow through after the day that I would do them. And she said, you've got to do these options. You have to do it. And she really encouraged me to start using my system for options. And then I did. So it's basically the same player. Get up in the morning, I rate the gap. If the gap rate's good, if I see BA and it's gapping down and it rates good, I can day trade it and I buy a put in it. I'm trading momentum and options. I'm not doing any tricky, tricky things. And so she encouraged me to start doing them. That was now like, gosh, nine years ago or 10 years ago now, but yeah, you know, nine years ago, I guess. Um, but other than that, it's the same system. So it's sort of it's a point, so I haven't changed anything. I definitely have what you could call a sixth sense because I've been trading for so long. That's not something that I could put in a point. <laughs> but that's like if you're with me in the trading room and I say, oh, my God, this is really, really good. It's going to go 100 percent. Then do it. <laughs> I mean, that's not like I can't make up a point for that. That's the 27th point is me. So there you go. As long as I'm doing this and trading and running the room and doing it live, you get the benefit of 27 points. And the last one is me. Um, it's intuition, it's experience, it's knowledge, it's doing this for as long as I've been doing it, you know. The course teaches what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day and take the entries and exits. And the class teaches you how to reinstitutional positioning in stock, which you need. The Golden Gap course teaches you how to trade gaps. And again, we're focusing on bearish gaps. So how do you get to where you want to make it a set amount again the money comes easy once you learn what to do and if you have a system that directs you as well as a mentor which is me you're going to get there it's a support system the room is a support system uh, have, being able to call me on the phone email me that's a support system i try to people that are new i try to baby them a little bit how are you doing mr smith what's going on did you do today's trade? you know i get it at the beginning people need help i'm here if you need me you can reach out but being in the live room is the best place to be every day ask me the questions they're live and again, the nice thing is you can use a system for day swing and options trading. I'm not doing any swing trades, but you could. Again, you could certainly do that if you want to. You're just, you're, you're not going to be in a, on, you know, four to one margin on swing trades. You're going to be in two to one margin or cash. But anyways, it's the whole point is to do the options. It's to get the overnight moves. But it's really a function of how much you risk. And again, my gap plays have a good risk to reward. You got to be consistent. And the share size is based on the stop. And the more you risk, the more you'll make. And that is just common sense as far as trading goes, the number of contracts, but you've got to have the cash. So again, you need a plan of action in place. Number one, trade only golden gaps are rated according to the 26 point rating system. So you have the high rate of success in your directional bias and your trades. You want more winners and losers. Number two, get the best entry with precision early on in the morning to get the good risk to reward trades. Okay, one to three I'm looking for. And then create a money management plan, whether it's 20000 a month or more, for you to achieve that goal. Even if it's not right this second because you have a small account, say by Labor Day or whatever. Okay, you want to try to grow your account to a set size. But the purpose of the system is to rate the gap and to only trade gaps that rate per the system. It measures gaps by rating them in a daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move on the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. And number four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So again, I've been teaching the class itself. I teach the class once a month. The class is this weekend for May. I've been teaching for a number of years. I've taught people from all over the world, some people that have never traded before, some people that have been traded longer than I'm alive. Everybody comes to me just straight out thinking even if you're trading that they know all this stuff and then i turn their world upside down by teaching them something new so i'm an expert in what i do you may have things that you've done that have sometimes worked sometimes doesn't it's the consistency that i offer people in the system to do this and it, the market could be bullish and we're still making money shorting literally all the time so it's about finding the right pick the Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. And again, I'm not predicting the gap. I'm predicting the direction when I see the gap. And then I rate it and, and determine what I'm doing all before the open. And again, I'm very organized about that, getting up early. 
but you only need one strategy. That's all. That's all you need to be successful in the market. You only need one trade a day. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Again, you don't have to read any of what's going on with the fundamentals. Tons of people have that and they fail all the time. Again, people are on social media jibber-jabbering about all kinds of opinions. That's not going to help you make money. If anything, you should stay off social media when you're trading because you could be influenced in your trade, whether good or bad, instead of focusing on the price action of what's really happening. That's fine, John. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. John has to go. Anyways, learn how to read institutional money in price patterns in gaps, and you don't need to do anything else because if your reason for doing this is to make money, this will make you money. I've been doing this for a long time. And again, it's it's something that you just learn. It's the checklist. The system I use is finding the right gap every day, which is a 26 points. And again, the difference, like I was saying, in reference to Kramer, he doesn't have something that you could just learn and apply. I do. And that's extremely important. Extremely important. A lot of people want to buy systems that have indicators and this thing and that thing. If there was any one indicator or several indicators in a kind of combination that worked to make you know a good system everybody would be using those indicators and no one would ever lose there is no indicator that's going to help you take good trades every day it just isn't and a lot of people miss the boat on that as well and rely too much on indicators and then go off the deep end in the wrong direction anyways empower yourself today to trade the golden gap course is a complete system to use to trade and again, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. Class is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. This is the last class uh, before Memorial Day, and then the next one is until June. So if you want to get in and start trading with us, the class is this weekend, 9 to 5. And the combo includes the trends, which is in June, June 11th, which is $74.99. You get a discount if you sign up for the combo at once, and you get two classes. And I'm doing a Central Park package. It's a beautiful picture of Central Park. This is going on through Friday, and this is a great offer. The Central Park packages, if you sign up for the Golden Gap course combo, which is $74.99, includes the Golden Gap course this weekend and the trends in June, you will get the trading room, free to the end of the year, the options newsletter free to the end of the year, and the market report subscription free to the end of this year, 2024, which is a long way away. If you want to sign up, you must email me at melissa at the stock swoosh.com. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Good questions here so far today. Good group. Then I have a couple of testimonials here. Um, the email is melissa at the stock swoosh.com. Some of you are recognized, some of you are new. And again, if you go to YouTube, you can follow me on YouTube. Not only do I have uh, training room videos, I have Central Park videos. <laughs> I have lots of videos in YouTube. I'm putting park, uh, park videos on too lately. Any questions from anyone about anything? Uh, there actually is some earnings out this week. There is earnings out this week and next week. If Joseph is asking, how much is a room in the newsletter after the first year? So say you sign up for the class, you do the class, and you get the room and the newsletter to the end of this year. Once you become a client and a student, I do offer student sales and discounts to renew for the trading room and the newsletter. If you want to just sign up for the options newsletter standalone, you can. There's no prerequisites. That is $4,999 for six months and $6,999 for 12 months. But once you become a student, I do specials all the time discounted classes and subscriptions for people that are ready are Golden Gap course students and clients. So I give people an opportunity to renew at a discount. And many people do. Some people learn how to do it though and you don't need me and you don't have to continue in the room. You can get up in the morning, you learn the system. I don't hold anything back in the class. Some people don't renew because they just want to do it themselves. 
and they know how to do it because they learn in the class. So I think the support right after the class of getting my trade calls in the room of the newsletter help you. But some people want to do it on their own and they know how to do it and they proceed on their own. Some people, even though they know how to do it on their own, like the fact of the support. They want to roll out of bed every day, sign in the room at 9 a.m. And even though they should be rating gaps, they're not. They just want me to make the pick and make the call and make it easy for them, which I do. So again, it's, you know, you'll know after you're in the room for a while, whether or not you think it's worthwhile to renew or not. So the room is $39.99 a year alone or $500 a month. But again, I do discounts for students for that, usually over Black Friday, the holidays, towards the end of the year. If you can't attend both class days, is it live or recorded? No recordings, no recordings allowed. It is a live class. You want to be there. You're paying for it. You want to get the benefit of the class and there's no recordings, no recordings allowed. So if you can't do both days, you could do one day in May, sign up, get the special, and you could do a second day in June. That I will allow if that's something you want to do, Joseph. Or you can pay this week, sign up, and do day one in May, day two in June, or you could sign up now, get the special, start trading with us, and do the class in June. The special expires on Friday of this week, if you sign up and pay by Friday and can't do this weekend's class in full, you could do it in June. So I've had people split the days and then you can just start trading with us, but you must be there live and you want to be like, you're asking me questions now. That's what you want to do. You want me to have the chart up and you're saying, you know, explain this to me. I don't get it. That's the benefit of having a live class. Again, the benefit is you're saying, I don't get this. Explain it again. And you're paying good money for the class. You want to get the benefit of the education and of learning and being able to ask questions live and then having me explain it to you and with the charts up. Again, everything, it's all in the charts and you see everything and it's there. And again, that's so beneficial. In fact, let me pull the charts up here quickly.